Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled The Quadrature Hybrid Directional Coupler. In this lecture, we will look at the properties of the quadrature hybrid coupler. We will look at its normalized and symmetric form. We will perform even and odd mode analysis, calculate the transmission and reflection coefficients, look at some characteristics of the coupler, and finish with a quick example of a design of a quadrature hybrid coupler. The quadrature hybrid is a 3 dB directional coupler with a 90 degree phase difference in the outputs of the through and coupled arms. It is also called a branch line hybrid. This type of directional coupler is often made in microstrip line or strip line form as shown in this picture that shows the general design of this device. Here you can see ports 1, 2, 3, and 4 with their respective transmission line with impedance C0. The four ports are connected to each other by four different transmission lines that make its distinctive square shape. These transmission lines, the top and the bottom, have length lambda over 4 an impedance of Z0 over square root of 2. And these transmission lines have impedance Z0 and length lambda over 4. We can observe in this picture that the quadrature hybrid has a high degree of symmetry. And any port can be used as an input port. The output ports are always going to be on the opposite side of the junction from the input port. And the isolated port will be the remaining port on the same side as the input port. For example, with all ports matched, power entering port one is evenly divided between ports two and three with a 90 degree phase shift between these outputs and no power is coupled to port 4, the isolated port. This is the scattering matrix of the branch line hybrid. And notice that the symmetry is reflected in the scattering matrix, as each row can be obtained as a transposition of the first row. Also, given the high symmetry of this coupler, we'll perform even an odd mode analysis to analyze it. Here is the normalized and symmetric form of the quadrature hybrid, where each line represents a transmission line with its characteristic impedance normalized to Z0, as we did with the Wilkinson power divider in the previous lecture. We will assume that a wave of unit amplitude A1 equals 1 is incident at port 1. Therefore, we will define B1 to be the amplitude of the reflected wave at port 1, B2, the amplitude of the reflected wave at port 2, B3, the amplitude of the reflected wave at port 3, and B4, the amplitude of the reflected wave at port 4. We will decompose this circuit into the superposition of an even mode excitation and out mode excitation. And since the circuit is linear, the actual response, the scattered waves, will be obtained from the sum of the responses to the even and odd mode excitations. Let's look first at the even mode of the quadrature hybrid. For even mode, we will assume a wave of amplitude one half incident at port one and a wave of amplitude one half incident at port four. Notice that by superposition, the two excitations provide the original excitation shown in the previous slide. Now, because of the symmetry of the circuit with the even mode excitation, the voltage at port one here is equal to the voltage at port four here and also here and here. Then we can bisect the circuit along this axis of symmetry and decompose it and replace the bisections with open circuits. Now let's look at the top half where port 1 is located. We will have an incident wave of amplitude 1 half. We will also have a reflected wave of amplitude gamma E for even mode and a transmitted wave of amplitude TE 
for the transmitted wave. We do the same approach for the odd mode. Now let's look at the odd mode. We'll have an incident wave of amplitude 1 half at port 1 and another incident wave of amplitude minus 1 half at port 4. Because of the symmetry, the circuit can be bisected along this axis of symmetry. And now for odd mode, we can replace the bisections with ground. The same as the even mode, at port 1, we will have an incident wave of amplitude 1 half. We will have a reflected wave, gamma O, for odd mode, and a transmitted wave, TO. Let's look at the even mode and the odd mode of this circuit at once to obtain the overall amplitudes of the emerging waves at each port of the branch line hybrid. For B1, which is the reflected wave at port 1, we have that it is equal to 1 half of gamma E plus 1 half of gamma naught. For B2, the wave exiting port 2, we will have it equal to 1 half of TE plus 1 half of T naught. For B3, the wave emerging out of port 3 will have that it is equal to 1 half of TE minus 1 half of T naught. And for B4, which is the wave going out of port 4, we'll have that it is equal to 1 half of gamma E minus 1 half of gamma naught. Now we will calculate the transmission and reflection coefficients. Let's begin first with the even mode, where this is the top half of the circuit for the even mode analysis. To obtain the transmission and reflection coefficient, we can multiply the ABCD matrices of each cascade component in the circuit. So the ABCD matrix for the even mode is equal to the cascading of the open circuit shunt lambda over 8 transmission line. Remember that it is open circuited because we are in the even mode. And so the admittance of the shunt open circuited transmission line is given by J tangent of beta L, which is equal to J. And then we have our quarter wavelength transmission line. And finally, we have our open circuit shunt lambda over eight transmission line. We multiply all three and we obtain our ABCD matrix for the even mode. Now we can calculate the transmission and reflection coefficients using the ABCD parameters done here. We obtain that gamma E equals zero and TE is equal to minus one over square root of two times one plus J. Now let's look at the transmission and reflection coefficients for odd mode. We will also multiply the ABCD matrix of each cascade component to obtain the ABCD matrix of the odd mode. First, we will have our short circuited shunt lambda over 8 transmission line. Remember that it's short circuited because we are in the odd mode. Therefore, the admittance of the shunt transmission line is given by minus j cotangent of beta l equals minus j and it's placed here. Now we have the quarter wavelength transmission line and finally we have another short circuit shunt lambda over a transmission line. We multiply them and we obtain our ABCD matrix for the odd mode. We obtain a reflection and transmission coefficients for the odd mode using the ABCD parameters. And we obtain that gamma O equals zero and TO equals one over square root of two times one minus J. 
Now we can plug the transmission and reflection coefficients into our original expressions for the waves emerging out of each port. So we have that B1 equals zero. This means that there is no wave going out of port one, so it means that port one is matched. For B2, the wave exiting out of port two, we have minus J over square root of two. This means that half of the power with a minus 90 degrees phase shift is transmitted from port one to port two. For B3, the wave exiting out of port three, we have minus one over square root of two, which means that half of the power with minus 180 degree phase shift is transmitted from port one to port three. And B4, the wave exiting out of port four is zero, which means that no power is transmitted to port four, the isolated port. Let's finish with a very quick example of the design of a quadrature hybrid. Design a 50 ohm branch line quadrature hybrid junction at a frequency F0. Since we already know the design and the behavior of the quadrature hybrid, this design is very easy. The transmission lines will be a quarter wavelength long at the design frequency F0, and the branch line impedances are given by Z0 over square root of 2, which is equal to 35.4 ohms.